Ordinarily, the mind goes bouncing back between pain and sensual pleasure. Even though we realize many times that sensual pleasures have their drawbacks, we keep going back, going back, because we don't see any other alternative to pain. When the Buddha taught what he called the middle way, it was, was to provide the alternative. Part of the middle way is right concentration, and there is a sense of pleasure there. But it's a different kind of pleasure. It's called the pleasure of form. Central pleasures come from sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. The pleasure of form is more the pleasure that comes when the body from within feels good, regardless of what it's touching outside. The various elements and various functions in the body seem to be working in harmony. And we get the mind in right concentration. That's what we're trying to induce. A sense that all the energies in the body are working together. The breath is flowing smoothly. If it's not flowing smoothly yet, you work on it. That's what directed thought and evaluation are for. The directed thought is when you focus your thoughts on staying with the breath. And evaluation is asking yourself, does this feel good? If it feels good, how, how do you keep it up? If it doesn't feel good, how do you change? That's the kind of thinking that enables the mind to settle into the sense of the body felt from within, without pushing the energies in different directions, where they, where they get out of balance. But even here you have to be careful, because it's very easy, once the breath gets comfortable, to forget about the breath and go for the pleasure. That turns into what John Lee would call delusion concentration, where you're still, but you're not really sure where you are. Or even worse, it just turns into drowsiness. You start falling asleep because you've forgotten your work, which was the directed thought and evaluation to make sure that the breath stays right, which is something you can't really let go of until everything really is well balanced in the body. Your, your awareness fills the body, the breath energy fills the body, and they feel solidly there. So in getting the mind to settle down, we're dealing both with pleasure and pain as felt from within. And we have to learn how not to be overcome by them. The Buddha calls this being developed in body and developed in mind. Developed in body doesn't mean you go out and exercise a lot. It means your mind isn't easily overcome by by pleasure. Developed in mind is when the mind is not easily overcome by pain. This means that when you encounter pains in the meditation, you have to learn how not to be knocked off course by them, you try to breathe through them. But remember the Buddha's instructions with regard to pain. It's not to make it go away. The instructions are to comprehend it, in particular to comprehend the mind's relationship to the pain. And so there'll be a back and forth as the mind begins to settle down and encounter some pain and works with it, either breathing through it or just basically not focusing in that part of the body, saying if the pain wants to be in the knee, you can have the knee. You're not going to move in. And that enables the mind to settle down even more. And then you can see more clearly what how the mind is reacting to the pain or getting involved in the pain. As for the pleasure, you're going to remind yourself, stay with the breath, stay with the body. The pleasure is not the topic of the concentration. The pleasure is one of the byproducts. It will do its work perfectly well without your wallowing in it. And so you have to learn how to regard the pleasure as no big deal. It's there, and it's going to be helpful. You learn how to use it as a tool. You don't make it the purpose of the meditation. And you have to remind yourself that as 
long as the mind can be overcome by pleasure, it's going to be overcome by pain. Because they both come from the same place. And if you hold on to those places, in other words, what the Buddha called the five aggregates, there's the form of your body as you feel it from within. Feelings, perceptions, mental fabrications where you put thoughts together. And consciousness, your awareness at the senses, including the sense of the mind. These things can give pleasure and they can give pain. And seeing that they give pleasure, we hold on to them. They're activities that we like to engage in, particularly as we like to fantasize our perceptions of something being entertaining or beautiful, attractive, interesting then form the nucleus around which we start fabricating our thoughts. And then there's a feeling of the pleasure that comes with those thoughts. But then the thoughts can turn on you. Other thoughts can give pain. It's the same process. And so if you hold on to these processes because of the pleasure they can give you, you'll find yourself that they're going to give you pain and you're holding on to pain. Even though nobody wants it, we hold on to it. Of course, it's so used to holding on to these activities. So if you don't want the pain that comes from these activities, you have to learn how not to be overcome by the pleasure that comes from them. As we get the mind settled in concentration, we're engaging in these activities. You're trying to get a sense of inhabiting the form of your body from within in a way that gives rise to a feeling of pleasure. And there's a perception that will hold you here, the perception of how the breath runs in the body. And your direct thought and evaluation as you're dealing with the task of getting the mind to settle into the body well. So the mind feels snug with the body, and the body feels snug with the mind. And then there's the awareness of all these things. We're engaging these act in these activities. But we have to be careful that we don't focus on the pleasure that comes from them. We use the pleasure. We use these activities as tools. But we have to stay focused on what we're trying to do here, what the task at hand is. Because we're trying to find a well-being that goes beyond these activities. And to do that, the mind has to be as I said, well developed, just as the body has to be developed in the sense of not being overcome by pleasure. So we engage in these activities, but we let the pleasure sort of riot, fall off us. We don't try to gather it up. And John Lee's image is of someone plowing, plowing a field, and then as the dirt falls off the plow, they stick it in a bag. If you keep doing that, you're going to get weighed down. That's how we tend to deal with these activities. We stick our pleasure in a bag. We stick our pain in a bag. To think about how long the pain has been there and think about how much longer it's going to be there. Especially if you're going to sit for an hour, all of a sudden the whole hour becomes an hour of pain. And it's only one moment that you're feeling the pain. But you've already sketched out the rest of the hour as being a painful hour. And however long the pain's been there in the past, you carry that around in your bag as well. No wonder you get weighed down. It's because we have that bag that wants to collect pleasure. Whatever comes off the plow, we stick it in the bag. Well, it turns out sometimes it's going to be pain. So you have to learn how to let the soil fall off the plow without gathering it up. Now, there's the pleasure is there, but you don't gather it up. The pain may be there, but you don't gather it up. This way the mind can stand apart from the pleasure and pain. So this is your alternative to going back and forth between indulgence and pleasure and indulgence and sensuality. But even here you have to be careful about how you indulge in the, the pleasure <coughs> that provides you with the alternative. You give rise to it, you, you nurture it, you take care of it. 
but you let it fall off the plow. You don't put it in a bag. Whatever pains come up, you let them fall off. You don't gather them up. And it's in training the mind in this way that you get to find some of these even better. But this requires that you be very precise in how you relate to pleasure and pain. So that neither of them can take charge of the mind. 